Hello, sixth graders. Uh, so we're going to get right into our study of ancient China. All right. Um, for your note styles today, what I would like you to do is kind of make a little bit of uh, a three columns graph. All right. Um, it should be titled uh, China's River Valleys. All right. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Um, we are not going to really be talking much uh, about the geography because we have done so much of that already. I want to talk one thing about the monsoons. All right. I want to focus most of our time, though, on civilization and then also the family and how important families are in ancient Chinese culture. All right. So these are what your notes should look like. Um, so the monsoon climate. Um, it's, it's all about the winds. All right. So we know that monsoons are winds. They are not... All right, Pete, a, nah, a storm. That's a typhoon. Okay, so notice this is just a rainfall chart, but notice these are some of the rainiest places on the earth. Notice here in Borneo, it rains year-round. They actually do not have a dry season. Okay, um, so if we look here, uh, as we have talked about before, we know that there are in the closer you are to the equator there's two seasons you have your wet season and then you have your dry season all right so these are maps of the various seasons notice here in the wet season the wind the winds are blowing off of the oceans okay in the seas and they are bringing with them lots of moisture hence that's why they are known as wet seasons okay in the during the dry seasons all right the winds are blowing off of the land so the winds take a dominant shift and change and change their directions and blow off the land so it's cooler air drier air dries it out and why Borneo is the one of the wettest places because the wind comes again across the oceans all right all right so civilization all right, we're just focusing most of our time on today. Okay, a um, couple things to know about civilizations. First and foremost is that many people in China settled along the North China Plain. Um, they were nomads. All right, and we know that nomads are hunter-gatherers, okay, meaning that they went from place to place hunting their food, gathering food. All right, so they went wherever the food was going. Um, another thing is that many of these farming establishments all right so we go from being hunter gatherers uh, to settlements so these farting <laughs> farting farming settlements um, they began popping up in the Huang Valley around 5000 BCE so we are talking 7000 years that the Chinese um, have had a culture uh, within that within that region all right and so the first um, group that we're going to be talking about are the Shang dynasty all right and so with the Shang dynasty um, again this is kind of the first known um, civilization there have been newer ones that have been discovered um, but not a lot is known about them yet uh, so we're going to just say that the Shang uh, is the first one and they rose they came to power around 1760 BCE all right. And one thing that's great to know about the Shang is that they are the ones that built uh, oh, We're going to live with that for right now. Um that they're the ones that built the first cities. All right. And then they also used bronze, okay? Um one thing we haven't really talked about are the different ages. All right, there's the Stone Age. Um, there are different Stone Ages, but look, now we're getting into like the metallurgy ages, so the bronze, the iron, steel, um, things of that nature, where people are going to be using stronger weapons, and because they have stronger weapons and better armor, um, they are able to fight and conquer more lands. All right, and also the thing about the Shang that's really important is that they established the first writing system in China 
All right, and what's important about that is that this is actually, um, they're able to do it um, using different languages. And what I mean by using different languages is that people of different languages could actually understand what the Shang were writing. All right, so here's an example of Shang writing. Uh, this is in your packet. It's also, um, you know, it's it's an important piece because it's one of the first evidences of writing. It's on a tortoise shell, um, and you just see it's very similar to modern Chinese writing, where they have characters that mean different things. All right, and so um, unfortunately, the Shang. Uh, are destroyed or, or lose power, which happens to quite a few. Um, and then the, the Zhao dynasty um, takes over in roughly uh, 1160 BC. Okay, that's when they overthrow the Shang. They don't really come to power uh, until much a little bit much later. That's when they're the strongest. All right. All right. So a Chinese family, our last. Uh, last few bullet points here okay um, so the family as we talked about and we'll explore um, the family is is the center of society all right everything revolves around your family all right it's the person's first responsibility all right is to your family Um, and so some households can contain up to five generations. Uh, however, if we're, and so that's, you know, in the city. Um, if we're talking out in the farms uh, where most families are living right now, um, they would probably live um, within a community village type of a thing, which is within walking distance of each other, though. All right? And even today, you can still see um, in Asian cultures uh, in Indian cultures as well you can still see the importance of family all right um, and so to kind of get and talk about uh, the next important thing within family is status all right and your status depended upon two things uh, your age and your gender all right and the most important authority in your family all right, the authority of the family rested with the eldest member. Okay, and so if we look here in our image, this man right here in the center, he is the oldest. All right, he is the center of the family, he is the nucleus, and then all of these around him. All right, are the older and younger generations, or the younger generations? Sorry, they wouldn't be older. Okay, um, and so this is, and this is what this picture depicts. It, it explains very well how um, the family is and was. All right, and then a couple more little points here, and we'll be done. Um, women, and you're gonna not like me for this, girls. Um, the women's roles were really governed by the men. All right, so what that mean? What does that mean? Well, it means this. Um, at first, you were ruled by your father. Then your father would pass you off to your husband. And then eventually, once your husband died, you were ruled by your son. All right, so women didn't really have any type of rights or roles or anything like that um, within the... Um, within um, the family life here, all right? Uh, and then the last thing that is vital to understanding the Chinese uh, is that they're really the first ones uh, to use two names, meaning a first and last name, all right? Um, so the first one is your family name, all right? And then your second one is your individual name. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in class. That's what we'll start with. Um, otherwise, I hope you took some great notes, and we'll use them uh, 
to complete our activities. See you on the flip side. Bye.